What it do, Dream Team? It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with the only time Magic Johnson trash talked Michael Jordan. Crazy 360 dunk. And before we dive into this MJ trash talking MJ, make sure you dive into that subscribe button, ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. I got social media, Patreon, all up top. You want to subscribe to any of it, put all the links in the description. All you got to do is hit the link, follow me, talk to me. Shoot me. I'll talk back. If you guys got a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. What we got? Welcome to another episode in the 23 part series collection. This is 23 Michael Jordan videos in 23 days. Today we are looking at the trash talk story of when Magic Johnson, for the first time ever, trash talked Michael Jordan and it went horribly wrong. You may have heard this story before, it's been well documented, but I don't think you've ever heard it quite like this. We have all these NBA players and legends talking about this day and the trash talk that happened. This is the story and I hope you guys enjoy. This video did take me a while to edit so I'd really appreciate it if you guys could hit that like button. Let's aim for 5,000 likes for the next episode tomorrow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification button so you are notified when a new episode releases. On the top right of your screen you can click on that link and you'll find a playlist that has all the Jordan videos that we've done so far. It's also in the description as well as the footage and content used in this video featured on the screen right now and in the description box as well. I don't want to keep you guys waiting so I hope you guys enjoy the video and enjoy. Chris Mullen tells a great story about the Dream Team. Everybody getting out of the way. You and Michael going at it. So all those great legendary players playing in an empty gym in Monte Carlo, and you got Magic and Michael just going at it, verbally, physically. Flashes, very loud through curses. Put us there, Magic. Put us there. <laughs> Talk to My me, Magic. My favorite Dream Team stories revolve all around Michael and Magic. Over the years, there's one basketball nugget that everybody talks about, and I call it the greatest game nobody ever saw. Could you just tell us a little bit about the, the back and forth between them? They were always competitive, I mean, no matter what. I mean, it, and it didn't just stop when we left the court. I mean, we, mm. we'd go to practice. They, they didn't want to play with each other. They always wanted to be on opposite teams. teams. And it took place during the Dream Team practice in Monte Carlo. Chuck Daly, the coach, said, we're going to get together really knock each other's heads out a little bit. And to make sure that he was able to accomplish that, he put Michael Jordan on one team, and he put Magic Johnson on the other team. Those two Smart guys man. were the driving force, really, to keep our practice and everything going. They kept that competitive edge with that East and the West going at each other. Everyone knew that Michael was the guy, but Magic just would not pay heed to that. You know, it was funny. <laughs> I'll I tell you this story right quick, because you would really enjoy this. So, Michael Jordan was setting the tone for us in a winning attitude, the greatest player. When he came in the door, it was all about business. With Magic and Michael, there was that little extra something <laughs> there, you know? Yeah. And something kind of to prove to each other. I always challenge Michael every day, and sometimes I would win, and most time he would win. You know, we would play. <laughs> Uh, a lot of shooting games, a lot of free throw games, a lot of three-point shooting contests. I mean, we were, we're, we're two competitive people, and so mm. I wanted to push him, and he wanted to push me. I took it upon myself to all. That's how you make each other better. The competitive nature inside of them push them both to become better than what they were. That's, you know what I'm Steel, stop, what is, iron sharpens iron. The people. And so I wanted to push him and he wanted to push me. I took it upon myself to always shoot with Michael. Okay, MJ, free throws today. Who's the first one to 50? Or we had little games, who, who was the better shooter? He didn't want to relinquish that control of the 80s, in a sense, even though we were going <laughs> So it was who can win, who's gonna have the bragging rights by the end of this trip? I'm the young guy with the old elder statesman. I thought I was the most competitive person that I ever knew until I met Michael. <laughs> we went at it in Barcelona, I mean, at each other. We, we thought we could beat each other at everything, and we tried to. Free throw, <laughs> jump shot, three-point, uh, cards, uh, checkers, anything. We wanted to beat each other so bad. No 
guys. They got all the riders. They can't stand in one spot too long. <laughs> I'm the big dog here. Whatever I say goes. And I never talk trash but one time in my entire life. With Jordan. With Jordan. Oh, all yeah. right. First ever time ever talking trash. So I we're, think we're, that comp if you're a competitor, bro, you know some I'm not a trash dog either, but there were rare moments like when I feel like somebody like pushed me and like I don't know, it was like anger, frustration, like built up and I was just like and, and it, I just lost it. There's some moments, you know, the magic probably just was like he was tired of the hearing that Mike's the, the best player. He was tired of Mike winning. That competitive nature inside of him didn't want to hear that. Didn't want to see Mike get these W's. He wanted to be the guy. And so I understand what that competitive oh, nature is. All right. Was First ever time ever talking trash. So we're with the dream team. Okay. And uh, for three days in a row, we had came into a tie because what Coach Daly did, he split the team up east versus west. We had me, Scotty, Mullins, Bird, and Patrick. All played in the east. Wow. And then we had the west guys, myself, David Robinson, Malone, Mullen, Drexler, and John Stockton. So we would play. Did they both say they had bullet on their team? David Robinson, Malone, Mullen, Drexler, and John Stockton. So we would play every day, tie. So this is the fourth day. Is that game in Monte Carlo? Was that as competitive as, as anything you've ever done? Best game I ever played in. Best Dang. game I ever played in, in, in the sense that no coaching. You know, yeah, there were referees, but not really. You know, uh, <laughs> and you had 10 Hall of Famers playing against each other. First ballot Hall of Famers. You know, it's not even a so question. Nice. It's not even a second, third, or fourth. They first, first ballot. And the way we competed, and I desire and sweat and trash talking and all the beautiful things about the game of basketball was illustrated in that one particular game. You envision a game being played, that's how the game is going to be played. Dang. Chuck I can imagine okay, what that this game is what's was. Gonna happen. We're going to play I it like a real game. could have been recorded. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what kind of a game he's competing in. He's got a game within a game. And uh, the competitiveness is in reality probably what drives him to be what he is. Well, the game starts out and Magic's team gets way ahead. And Magic, as is his want, starts joining a little bit. Such a dimer! Way ahead. And Magic, but, as is his oh want, my. starts joining a little bit. Michael Jordan came down the court. And I said, he okay, made a jump had shot, that. And it was lucky. Had that. He got the ball. He stopped at the three-point line. He took a shot and he said, right back at you. Oh! But it was very hard. Okay, okay, Magic. Right back at you, baby. Don't think you're the only one that could do that. A shot okay. He said, right back at you. But it was very hard for Magic to kind of surrender the ground to somebody else. For sure. I went over there, tapped him on the shoulder, and said, hey, man. If you don't turn into Air Jordan, we're going to blow you out today. He broke the huddle. <laughs> he hit a three, and he's looking at me. <laughs> Fall away jumper. Good. Bad. What did I tell you? So he came down again, hit another three. <laughs> I came down. <laughs> His energy is real high. He feels like he's in an opportunity to prove himself. <laughs> I'm still Magic Johnson. I still dominate this game. Yeah. You ain't the guy. You got other players in this in this gym. Don't be cheating on me. Doesn't take much to get Michael going. Just a little something to tweak him, and it's on. Natural <laughs> Magic dynamic would bring that out. Jimmy, his eyes got big. <laughs> Usually that tongue come about right here, and now it's way out. <laughs> Just leave that look, then you know, just give him the damn ball and get out of the way. As much as it was five on five, we could see in Monte Carlo that it was gravitating towards, okay, Michael and Magic. Magic was hesitant. I love that, bro. I I absolutely love it. I love to hear the, the, just the competitive the competitiveness between the two, bro. And Magic, you know what I'm saying? Magic push that button on Mike. And when you push that button, 
You already think Mike Glenn at his top level, but then somehow he's able to go higher. He's able to take it to another level, but you're already at your top level, so you, you can't reach Mike's top level. And so you know, Mike was probably here. They was here. And then he pushed that button on Mike, and Mike said, Err. and Magic was like, this is high as I go. <laughs> okay, Michael and Magic. Magic was hesitant to surrender his place on the mountaintop. And Michael being Michael, he needed to say, no, That's I'm on the top crazy. of the mountain now. Now this is That's the greatest crazy. shot I'd say. He came down the right side, took off. David Robinson took off. And he said, okay, I'm gonna just sit here in the air. Because I know David <laughs> Robinson is gonna go down. So David uh, Robinson went to the ground. He 360, tongue moving and dunked it in a, Three practice, six game. In a practice game. You ever see Michael Jordan? Well, just in those commercials. Maybe you see him do one of those 360 dunks. And I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Nigel was saying, look, NBA's not yours yet. And I'm still here. Michael's like, no, it's old. This is mine. And the funny thing was Larry was, he was sitting on his side going, it's his. <laughs> basically took the torch in that practice session on our way to Barcelona and Magic handed it over, not graciously, but he, he said, you know, you're the greatest. <laughs> Michael's team caught up. And finally, Jordan's team holds on to win. And when it was all over, you could really see that something was hovering in the air. Magic's over there shooting alone, and he's jawing at Michael, and Michael is jawing back. Finally, Michael <laughs> starts singing the Gatorade song, Be Like Mike. Rubbing it in a little bit, as is Jordan's want. To this day, Michael Jordan calls it the most fun he ever had on a basketball court. And that's what resonated with me. I love that. The, uh, rest I I love that, right? Because there's guys who who once you get to a certain level, it's not as fun anymore because there's nobody that can compete with you. There's nobody that that's on your level, so it's like the game becomes less fun, and then you meet this. It's like anime. I'm a big anime fan now. Then you meet that competitor. You meet that person who's able to play at your level and who's able to make you take it to another level to exceed what you probably thought you could do. Or, or give you the ability to play at the level you know you can play at. You feel me? But you haven't played at that level because you haven't needed to and they push you to make you go to that higher level. It's Fun. It's fun for someone who just loves and and thrives in competition to be pushed, and that's probably why it was so fun for Mike because it was like it had probably it had been a while since he'd been pushed like that. And that's what resonated with me. We're in the uh, restaurant and Larry and I sitting there talking. So enters Michael Jordan, and I remember Michael Jordan sitting there telling us, "Remember this." Larry and I were talking, and Michael walks in. We were sitting there. He sits down, and Larry and I are going back, telling stories with each other and just having fun. So Michael says, I just want to tell you guys, I, I, I really, in college, you guys were the two guys I looked up to, so on and on and on. And even in the NBA, you guys have been dominating. But he said, I, I'm just here to tell you both of you. And he took a puff of his cigar. And he said, Larry and Magic, you had your run, but there's a new sheriff in town. There's a new sheriff in town. Yes, <laughs> 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 I had now to both of us. We both looked at each other and said, you know what? It is your turn. So go ahead, young man. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and we both hit each other like, well, he's not lying. <laughs> I love that, bro. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please help me out by hitting that like button. Let's aim for 5,000 likes for the next episode tomorrow. Here are two new episodes I think that you will also enjoy. And I will catch you guys in the next one.
absolutely love that one, man. Uh, but that's all we got for this one. You guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. I got social media and Patreon all the time. You can subscribe to any of it. Put all the links in the description. All you gotta do is hit the link, follow me, talk to me. Love talking to you guys. You guys are the most incredible team on YouTube. It's your boy Dina. Out.